and New Zealand's Australian listed shares today steady at 83 cents. Well, some sweeping changes are coming to New Zealand's communication landscape. The government awarding Telecom New Zealand construction of the majority of the country's $3 billion national broadband network. Smaller operators have been chosen to build the ultra-fast network in Christchurch and Wellington. As part of the deal, Telecom will have to spin off its network arm known as Chorus. It aims for separation by late this calendar year. And uh, Telecom's shares in Australian trade uh, there you can see up 15 cents at $2.43. Well, troubles coming out of Europe have rattled the currency markets, the euro plunging to record lows against the Swiss franc and the Aussie dollar following with some hefty falls. How can you capitalise on these big volatility swings uh, in the FX markets? Well, some, for some answers, Brooke Corty spoke to Greg Secker, CEO of Knowledge to Action, and began by asking his favourite Forex trades in the market right now. Well, the real, the best trades in the market uh, today is, first of all, is keeping them at the risk low. Currency trading, of course, you're seeing these big volatile swings as the growth estimates get shrunk, and of course, these local currencies are reacting. You saw it here in, uh, you saw it here in Australia. You saw what happened in Europe overnight. Look, uh, the key here is keep the risk low and look for the opportunities. Instead of in the old days, people used to trade currencies where they try and get them to break out and make those big movements. Today, it's all about after the big moves happened trading the currency back to its average, back to its mean, and that's where your investors are making money today. So what are the tools you say people should use to keep their risk low, as you say? Well, well it's interesting. Sort of 10 or 15 years ago, the kind of tools we would use in the money markets or in the institutional banking world, your average private investor wouldn't have access to today with the technology on the internet and the kind of tools that are available. Really professional and industry, institutional level grade tools are available to everybody. Um, the, the key things with currency trading because of the volatility is you know, keeping risk low to 1% and that means risk managing all trading and, and today the, the sort of tools floor traders used to use maybe 15 years ago such as looking at the, the pivot lines which were always based on the previous day's trading session giving us a guide as to where the, where the ceiling and where the floor of the markets was. Your average investor today interesting are using those very same tools which really show you a guideline of where, where strength and where weakness in that market is. What about leverage? Um, can you use, do you use leverage as a tool in uh, less volatile times, um, less risky times, or can you use it as a tool now? I guess I'm just trying to get a sense of the kind of leverage that's sensible in the market right now. Uh, this is a case of less is more. Yep. If you look at worldwide brokerages from the US all the way as far as, as this part of the world, uh, brokerage of cut you know, in the old days, when I say the old days, three years ago, in the States, you, you could get 200, 300, even 400 to one, which I think is an irresponsible broking from a market maker to an end mm. investor. Um, today, they've cut that down to 25 to one and even four to one. I think the opportunities across those major 16 currency pairs with the volatility means uh, you know, less leverage is more. Today, investors are looking if they can pick up between 100 and 150 pip or point movement a week, they can produce a good sustainable return on that and certainly hedge any foreign exposures that they might have. What would you suggest are the best market hours, foreign exchange market hours for Australians to trade? Well, um, early morning uh, market is coming off, obviously the, uh, the sessions uh, back where I'm from. Um, is, is, is a great move and then there's nothing really much to do here for the private investor during the day uh, than wait for the moves to come later on in the afternoon so you've kind of got a spell in the morning around now and then you've got which is uh, which there's of the four majors is where there's some good currency movements and again you're looking at really pulling 30 to 60 point currency movement which is which is good sustainable income and then really not much to do throughout the day and then later on towards the end of the session here in Australia is that is the next time to pick uh, probably five or six trading opportunities that tends to be the pattern over here, here in this part of the world and just to return to I guess where we started about keeping risk low um, at the moment do you find with the increasing participation of retail investors in foreign exchange markets and it's inherently more volatile and inherently more risky to even be in this market it's a four trillion dollar a day market the private investor really contributes a fraction to that it's mm -hmm. mostly the big interbanks and the interbanks that are moving so you know over the last five years um, with the advent of more investors coming online the pricing tools are better uh, you can have real-time access to the internet and of course spreads are constantly reducing as brokers are getting more competitive so it is certainly adding but they're not really adding the same vol swings that when you get major interbank movements or the or the major market makers playing in the market so it, it only really fractionally adds to it
After the break, Thorn Group's full year profit has jumped 40% thanks to a growth spurt in its radio rentals business. We'll speak with Greg, uh, Thorn, uh, Greg, sorry, John Hughes, Thorn Group's managing director, in just a moment.